right, everyone, it's that time. We're about to go ahead and get ready to get started. we like to start on time. So now it's 12 o'clock. I'm going to ask each and every one to please stand and face Jerusalem so that we can open up. Please stand and face Jerusalem so that we can open up. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the trumpet and dance. Praise him with the trumpet and dance. Praise him with the string instruments and organs. Praise him with the string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. I read Psalms 150 verses 1 through 6. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading, teaching, and doing of his word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good afternoon to our elder brother, Brother Bowie, who's watching us also. And it is a blessing and a pleasure and an honor to come forth and stand before you at such a time, even on the Lord's Sabbath day, to fulfill his will. So I'm glad to have you all. And I like to say that your elder brother, Brother Bowie, wants me to let you all know that he did. Uh, he's going to be out until... He can uh, recover because he tested positive with this flu. And anyway, we going to let the people know to take this thing serious because it is not a joke because the world has put forth some precautions that you should take. Keeping social distance and different things like that. Washing your hands and all these type of things that you should do. Drinking your fluids if you're not feeling well. However, because as we see, the Lord direct his way and the Lord do what he will. But one thing we want to let you know is that we stand here today, not as proud, but as servants of the Lord to come forth as essential work that needs to be done. We're serving the Lord, just like with my regular job. They call us essential workers. We have to do it. And for the Lord, the Lord have essential workers that have to come forth and deal with his ministry and his word as well. So we want you to make sure you all say in a prayer for our elder brother, Brother Bowie, that the Lord hearken unto our voice and that he strengthen and heal and recover his servant who has been serving him and has brought us this word all every Sabbath day teaching us the way of truth. So with that said, we are gonna step into this lesson. This lesson is titled, We Are One Body. We are one body. Because we have to really understand how the Lord have set things up concerning this ministry, this walk, and the work that the Lord is bringing forth unto the world. Because this gospel must be preached before the end come. The Lord let us know that he's going to use his servants that's got to serve him. But one thing that uh, inspired me to deal with this particular topic is I looked at what Moses said when the Lord was ready to smite all Israel and just leave one man. The, Moses said, Lord, he praying for the people. He said, Lord. I know you're angry with your people, but if you're going to smite your people, Lord, also block me out of the book. Now, that's some love, and that's something that's going on that he showed me that the Lord put this thing like we on. We all in this together. We all are one body. If one gets sick, we the body feel the pain. If one is hurting, the body feel the pain. If one is stressed, the body feels the pain. We have to be there for one another, to encourage one another, to bear with one another and love how the Lord have taught us and have given us this word and to keep his holy commandments. And as we go through this lesson, we're going to look at some things concerning marriage and how the Lord broke that down. And we're going to look at this body 
who this body is really dealing with. Because this body is the body of Christ that we're going to be bringing today and talking about the mindset of understanding. So we're going to open this lesson up in Genesis. We're going to start in Genesis chapter five. We're going to start in Genesis chapter five. And we're going to break some things down in this lesson, like I said, concerning the body and how the Lord have set this thing up. We're going to uh, start this in Genesis chapter five. And I want you to pick it up at verse one, Genesis chapter five and verse one. OK, my brother, when you get that, go ahead and read. This is the book of the generations of Adam, mm -hmm. in the day that God created man, uh -huh. in the likeness of God made he him, male and female created he them. Now, in the likeness of God made he him, male and female created he what? Them. them. And he called their name what? Adam. Adam. Just one name. And like the beginning, he called their name Adam. But you look at that too, because he said male and female. You had Adam and Eve. We look at that too, but the Lord is dealing with a oneness and he talks about that and he tells us about that. And we want to look at that even flowing through this lesson. But let's go further. Let's go into Malachi chapter two. We're going to go into Malachi, the second chapter. And even what he said, he created man in his own likeness and the likeness of God made he him. Right mm -hmm. now, we want to go all the way with this thing. We want to go after the likeness, after the image, and even after his kind. We're going to want to go all the way with this thing, how the Lord setting this up. But now, let's go into Malachi chapter 2 and last book of the Old Testament. Some people don't like that Old Testament. But sometimes they like it when they, it's something they like to read. Yeah, let's go there. Right. Let's go to Malachi, but we deal with Genesis to Revelations, brother. Malachi chapter 2, and I want you to pick it up at verse... 15, Malachi 2 and 15. Okay, it, once you get it, go ahead and read. And did not he make one? Yet had he the residue of the spirit. Now, this Lord talking like in the beginning, did not he make one? Yet he had the residue of the spirit. The Lord had enough wisdom and understanding to bring forth two bodies at once, but he didn't. He brought forth one and he took Adam's rib and made he the woman out of one. And, and it's going to ask a question. Go ahead and read. And wherefore one? And now the Lord asking the question, well, why is it that he just made the one like that? Why he didn't just create the two beings from the beginning? He had the residue of the spirit, but he did one. And we're going to see in this lesson why the Lord doing that, because he's trying to show us something. The Lord always trying to pour up some wisdom and understanding. He said, and all you're getting, get an understanding what he's doing and how he's doing it. But go ahead. And, wherefore one? Go ahead. That he might seek a godly seed. That he's seeking a what? Godly seed. A godly seed. The Lord is looking for us to come forth with godliness. He looking for those that's coming forth to deal with and take heed to his spirit. Take heed to the word of God. He said he looking for a godly seed. One that's to be like God. That's what the Lord looking for to be part of this body. But go ahead and read. Therefore, take heed to your spirit. And let none deal treacherously and, against the wife of his youth. And he said, take heed to your what? To your spirit. We're going to look at that spirit that the Lord tell you to take heed to because you got to take heed to that in order to figure out how this oneness is working and how to come on one with this body and how to be in fellowship with the saints and of this ministry. See, this is serious business that we're dealing with. But he said also. It's your companion. The woman he was dealing with, but he, the Lord, a lot of times deal with parables and he deal with information, giving you a situation or a scenario so you can understand something else and what he's doing in the final picture. But let's go into Ephesians chapter four, my brother, Ephesians, the fourth chapter, because the Lord said, therefore, take heed to your spirit. That's a big key to what we're dealing with and how we are supposed to deal with before the Lord. Take heed to your spirit. Watch how you're thinking about things. Watch the knowledge that you follow after and that you heed to. But now, Ephesians chapter 4, and we're going to pick it up at verse 4. Ephesians 4 and 4. All right, once you get it, go ahead. There is one body. How many body? One. It's one body. Like a, a baby can understand one. One. <laughs> right. It's one body. Go ahead. 
and one spirit. And how many spirit? One. One spirit is one word. Some people like, oh, well, this, I, I, you know, I don't agree with that. It's one word that the Lord is setting forth. Go ahead and read. Even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. It's one hope. And go ahead and read. One Lord. How many Lords? One. One. If all men have to come to this one to be saved, and the Lord used his people to bring forth this word, to bring forth the knowledge of truth that men might understand and believe and follow him heartily. And we're going to look at that because it's even here in this one Lord and what it say next? One faith. It's one faith. You got to believe on this one spirit, this one Lord that the Lord set up all. It's all supposed to be one. And you're supposed to be on one with this. It shouldn't be no discrepancy. Well, I don't agree with that. We're going to look at it. It shouldn't be no discrepancy on dealing with this love and truth. And that's what we're going to be dealing with a lot through this lesson. Uh, go ahead and read. One baptism. Well, how many baptism? One. That's in the name of Jesus. That's right. Now, if you got baptized in, a, in some other way. That would you didn't baptize under the one. The one baptism is through Jesus' name. Because some people say, well, we baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Wait a minute. What name you? You ain't say no name, brother. No, it's one baptism, and we understand how that worked. The Lord has showed us all this thing, and that's why we that's why it's essential, as I was stating earlier, to come forth as ministers of the Lord to bring forth this truth. Because a lot of people don't have this, and this is what brings you life. This what brings you hope. This what brings you healing. That's right. And another thing is whether the Lord healed you or not. That's what, or, or the Lord had you come down with something. It's like the Lord said, like he, uh, the Hebrews said. These three Hebrews said, we don't know whether the Lord going to deliver us, but what we do know, we're going to serve the Lord and keep his word. And we got to have that same mindset. Because this, this flesh is not susceptible to things befalling it, to fall to affliction, to pain. But we got to work on it. We got to help each other out with this thing. We're going to look at this thing. We're going to go. What verse are you? We have six. Did you read six? No, I didn't. Read six. One God and Father of all. Go ahead. Who is above all and through all and in you all. One God and Father of all that's above all. And he said, they in, he in you all. That's right. Ain't that something? It's supposed to be one. One under, it should be one understanding. But some people, even in one house, you have some different understanding, which shouldn't be. We're going to look at this because the Lord set in his oneness and he set the stage in his word. And, and we're going to break it down even with this lesson and many other lessons we do. But skip down to verse 15 and continue. But speaking the truth in love. That's what we're supposed to be dealing with, speaking the truth in love. And always talking about keeping these commandments and keep these commandments on high in your mind. Go ahead. May grow up into him in all things, uh -huh. which is the head, even Christ. Wait, so you could grow up in him in all things. This is an important piece. You can grow up in him, in the Lord, in all things, because that's what it's all like, being in him. Because this is this one body that's going to prevail, that's going to last, that's going to continue. This is what the Lord is showing us, and he is the head. That's right. Christ is the head. I might not be here tomorrow, but what I know is the Lord is still on high and reigning. And if you believe on him, he's going to bring you to all what he said he's going to do, all the blessings, all the promises that he promised. The Lord ain't going to fail not one word on what he tell you. And we've been taught this thing for a lot of years. That's why, like I say, we don't stand here as proud. Oh, this thing can't touch me. No, brother, that ain't what it's all about. It's, hey, whether the Lord deliver me. But if he don't, we still going to serve him. That's right. But go ahead and read, brother. 16. Uh-huh. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplied. Now, from which the whole body fitly joined together. This body joined together. See, just like your body here. If one hand hurt, hey, the, the other hand pick up and it's our going. I can't write with my left. I can now. <laughs> Left hand gets stronger. Man, I used to be a righty. Now I'm a lefty because I got to do this because the body got to continue. But this body I'm talking about is this body is Christ. We're going to look at it. Go ahead. According to the effectual working in the measure of every part. Uh, in the measure of every part. Every part needs to be effectually working and doing what they got to do. Just like with this thing. 
like I said, essential workers. You don't have just one person doing this thing. This thing had to be brought forth by a host of people that the Lord used to bring this word and to stand up and stand strong in the Lord. Go ahead. Make of increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Now, make it what? Increase of the body. That's right. See, this body, and they talk about this working. Make it increase. This body ain't deep. You beat this body down. Oh, the body of Christ is, oh, man. No, the body of Christ is supposed to be strong. The body of Christ is supposed to be working and effectual working. Why? Because this body is bringing forth life. Right. It brings forth health. And goodness. Now get that body working. Shut that body down. <laughs> get let get that body going. That's the body of the Lord. And this is fitly joined together. But what verse are you? That's the end of 16. End of 16? Yeah. All right, I want you to skip down to verse 23 and continue. We're not gonna read all that. Skip down to verse 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Now he said, Take heed to your spirit, we read earlier. Take heed to the spirit of your mind. Be renewed. In the spirit of your mind to know how the Lord is setting this thing up and to know how you have to stay in tune with this thing and and always holding fast your faith. The shield of faith. Brother Bowie taught that many uh, uh, several lessons telling you the shield of faith. You got to believe this thing even to the end. But go ahead and read, brother. 24. Uh huh. And then he put on a new man. Which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Now, that you put on this new man, which is after God. <laughs> See, but we're going to look at this further. Go ahead. Wherefore, putting away lying. Put away. You got to put away lying. Like you tell that child, man, put that toy away. That means they got it out playing with it or something. See, put away lying. So you got some lies that's hooked around, that deal around by the body. No, put that stuff away. You got to you sometimes you have to get in the mirror and say, man, be quiet. Stop. Don't say that no more because you, you got to put away the lying lip. The lips start lying. Oh, you know, brother, you want this is a body of truth. This is a body of love. This is a body that's supposed to be doing all the good things the Lord tell us to do. Go ahead, brother. Speak every man truth with his neighbor. Speak every man what with his neighbor? Truth with his neighbor. Go ahead. For we are members one of another. Because we members of one another. So it's all about the truth. But the truth sometimes comes as a reproving. The truth comes as correction sometimes. And that's what we got to also deal with. We have to deal with reproof. We have to. That's a part of this work and his body, too. And it's all good when the Lord bring it forth correction as well. Right. It ain't always joyous, the Lord tell you, to take that spanking. But afterward, it yield the peaceable fruits of righteousness. Man, I got to get back on the right path, man. The Lord told my pockets up. Yeah. Yes. But the Lord is able to wound and he heal. The Lord do all these things. We've been learning this for a long time. We got to just stand up and walk in it and understand what the Lord is doing and stay on tune constantly. Let's go into Jeremiah chapter three. Jeremiah, the third chapter. So because we looking for the Lord to bring forth the things that he say. We looking for. The Lord to perform his word mm -hmm. and to keep it real, as we say. That's why we come here with the uncut word of God. This is what you need for the salvation and the strength of our souls to continue this thing, to continue this walk. Because it's about the renewing of the mind. That's why the Lord say, take heed to that spirit. Make sure your mind is on point. Because that mind, they like to say, it's a terrible thing to waste. <laughs> But now let's go into this uh, Jeremiah three and we're going to pick it up at verse 14. Still bringing down marriage a little bit here. Three and 14, brother. Go ahead. Turn, O backsliding children, said the Lord, for I am married unto you. Turn, O backsliding children. See, we have done some error. We have did some things that we should be ashamed of. That's why the Lord say, turn, repent. Put away this lying and different things. You know, you might have been one that said, hey, my, my, my mom in heaven smiling down. No, put away that lying. Uh, you go to heaven immediately when you die, brother. Put away this lying tongue. The Lord said we got to get away from lies and things of naught and foolishness. But speak every man truth to his neighbor. But go ahead and read. And I will take you one of a city and two of a family. Uh -huh. And I will bring you to Zion. Oh, one of a city and two of a family. Uh -huh. 
Now it sounds like we talking about more than uh two. Because now you talking about some mul multiplying of people. But the Lord said, I'm a, it's a marriage. So the marriage showing you how it's going to be a oneness when you talk about marriage. They go, the two can be one. Now you, the Lord going to start joining some more because it's bigger than one or two. The ones and twos, you're going to look at, you're going to have multiple people that could be on one page by what? The spirit of the mind dealing with this word and understanding. We're going to look at it. Go ahead. We have 15. Uh-huh. And I will give you pastors according to my heart. Hey, why do you think we're here today? That's right. Because the Lord done gave us a pastor according to his heart. Praise the Lord. They have been bringing, and he want to see, are my people going to lay down? Or are you going to continue to deal with this truth that you've been taught the whole time? You've been taught every Sabbath day. Yes. Your elder brother come forth telling you how to lean on the Lord. Knowing his power. He got all power in heaven and earth. Have no doubt. No fear and love. You have to know how to deal with things righteously, but you have to know how to use wisdom as well. And don't deal, don't just go with folly, but go ahead and read, brother. Which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. What are he going to feed you with? Knowledge and understanding. Knowledge and understanding. It's the only way that the servant of the Lord can come and stand before you is with knowledge and understanding. You need this. And that's who the Lord going to stand up. But let's see what he said in the last time. Skip down to verse 17 and continue. At that time, they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord. Now, at that time, once the Lord set all this up, they're going to call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord. Go ahead. And all the nations shall be gathered unto it. How many nations going to gather to him? All. All nations. See, this sounds like more than one and two people. All nations about to gather up with the Lord, join the Lord, join his body. And what? Different nationalities can join the Lord, not just Israel. Yeah. Go ahead and read. To the name of the Lord. To the name of the Lord. To Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk anymore after the imagination of their evil heart. See, and that's why repentance have to come in. We have to know where we are at. If you strive with a brother without cause, meaning... You in error and your brother bringing you good word, good doctrine, but you want to strive about it. You want to reprove the wind. You want to change the word of God. No, we have to deal with this thing in truth and in righteousness. What, what, what verse was that? That's the end of 17. That was the end of 17. All right, that's good. Let's go to Isaiah 62. Isaiah chapter 62. Because it shouldn't be no one to have a dispute to be on one and gather with God. But it, there are some that don't believe. But he's, the Lord said, should their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God Just because God forbid that he set it up that way. on Because this brother, this sister don't believe. So now, uh, well, I guess I can't believe on the word of the Lord. No, just because this person don't believe or that person. You have to continue this thing, what the Lord show you. In confidence. But Isaiah 62, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Isaiah 62 and verse 1. Once when you get that, go ahead and read. For Zion's sake, will I not hold my peace? Now, the Lord, this is the Lord say, for Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. And we need to, because the Lord got to deal with us. The Lord have to help us. And it's the Lord. That's why I said he the head of the body and all the joints is getting supplied by this head. It's just like. Your mind tell you, raise your net left knee. Keep your other foot on the ground. Put it back down. Oh, your back hurting. You need to rub it with something. Your mind, the Lord is the head. He's supplying all the joints and fitly knit together. Don't cause no separation, no division. It's supposed to be all on one, and you're supposed to understand how the Lord set leadership up and how he set up his servants to come forth and to bring his word. The Lord going to continue to do this because you see what he said. He will not keep silent for Israel's sake. Go ahead. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest. And the Lord ain't resting. He working. The Lord said, I work hitherto and my father work. That's right. But that's why the Lord tell you, obey the laws of the land. That's why we tell you, that's why we don't have people in the church today. Watch your social distances because this thing is serious. But the Lord is still working. And the Lord don't want to have to smite you because you transgressed. Well, I'm going I'm to do this something anyway. No, don't be rebellious. Listen to what your elders teach you. They haven't been elders for no reason. They have been through a multitude of affliction and experiences. And that's why I listen to my elders. 
And I talk to my elders. And we have to be on one so we can know how to go forward where the Lord is bringing us to. To the place that the Lord going to bring. Because we're going to look at this lesson. This is, you know, we just, uh, we ain't even start cooking yet. You know how the <laughs> water ain't even start boiling? It's just, you know, you got a little sim on it. But we working this thing. What verse? We at the middle of 62. 62 and verse uh, one. Uh huh. Read verse two. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness. Go ahead. And all kings thy glory. And thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Uh huh. Now, skip. All right. That was verse two. Yes, sir. Skip down to verse five for me. Skip down to verse five. We ain't gonna read all that, but the Lord's talking about how He love Israel. This a crown unto Him and all that, because it's important for us to do what we have to do. Before the Lord in keeping his commandments. But go ahead and read verse 5. For as a young man marry a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. Now, as a young man marry a virgin, a good, clean woman, the Lord said the son's going to marry him. Yeah. See, the Lord bringing, what he trying, God is trying to put man on one. Even though it's two, like male and female is different. They different from one another, but he trying to bring them together on one with the, with that, the man of the spirit. But the Lord also going to give you, because everybody got their own body. We see different people in the church got their own body. But how you one body? Because you got on the same thought pattern. You on the same understanding of this word to keep it and do it all the way to the end. But go ahead and read. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, uh -huh. so shall thy God rejoice over thee. Just like the bridegroom rejoice on the bride, so your God going to rejoice over you. Go ahead. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Now, I, the Lord said, I done set up watchmen. They ain't going to never hold their peace day or night. Because it's essential to bring forth the word of God for healing, for mercy. Mercy come through the word of God. Truth, righteousness, patience, all the good things that you need, health and life come from the word of God. And we need this. Go ahead. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. Ye that make mention of the Lord, don't keep silence. Go ahead. And give him no rest till he establish, until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. And don't give the Lord no rest until he establish and he make Jerusalem a praise in this earth. It said, don't give the Lord no rest. What's that mean? Not only are you talking about this thing day and night, you meditating on this thing day and night. When you by the way, the Lord say, you talking about this thing. When you in your house, you talking about this word. When you rise up, you talking about this word. When you lay you down to sleep, what you talking about? This word. You constantly supposed to stay and dealing with this word. And the Lord loved that. But he also say, don't get the Lord no rest. Keep on calling on the Lord. Keep praying for your elder brothers. Keep praying for the. The ministers keep praying for the people of the congregation. Pray that the Lord even take the virus away so that his people can go forth freely and bring forth this word or protect them that when they move, they can bring forth this word. Those of you that call upon the Lord in truth, keeping his commandments, he hearken unto those that keep his commandments. He hearken unto the prayers of his servants. Call on him and don't give him no rest until he said Jerusalem will praise in this earth. And this is what we're dealing with also. But let's go to Romans chapter 35. Romans chapter 35. Chapter eight. Uh, excuse me. Romans chapter 8. Thank you. Romans chapter 8. Because you don't want to. Uh, uh, don't let the Lord off the hook either. You know, that's why several servants, they reminded the Lord of his word. They reminded the Lord, Lord, I walk before you, Lord. I'm your servant. But the Lord do what he will. We understand that. But one thing we understand, too, above all, is that you keep this love and keep these commandments continually. <laughs> Don't break that. Don't get tired or weary. Man, I'm tired of these old commandments, man. Matter of fact, I, I, I was tired of keeping the Sabbath anyway. Maybe some think like that. No, always. Hey, man, I'm ready to do the will of God continually. Even to the end. But let's go to Romans 8. Pick it up at verse 35. Pick it up at verse 35. All right, go ahead and read. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? That's a question. Who gonna separate you from the love of Christ? 
Who? I remember my sisters. They came at me and said, you're going to go out there and you're going to whoop that bully down or we're going to whoop you. I was afraid of my sisters. I still think about that to this day. Like, man, and it wasn't no question which way I was going. It's just like the Lord tell you, you're supposed to fear him above all. Now, the Lord tell you, keep his commandments. What you, I'd rather face any situation versus breaking. Now, I'm going to break the commandment of God. No, I'm going to keep the word of God and I go against another situation, but I'm keeping the word. And we have to understand how the Lord set this up. Go ahead. Shall tribulation? Shall tribulation separate you? Little trouble? That's what's going to separate you from the, from the love of Christ. Go ahead. Or distress? Because you stressed out. You're going, oh, man, you know, I'm stressed, man. I can't take this no more. I can't walk this thing no more. One brother told me that. We was in the midst of preaching this word on public transportation. A brother got off. He said, hey, see it. Tell the brothers, I can't do this no more. I said, brother, you tell them yourself. But he got weary. You, we're going to let a little distress separate you. Go ahead. Or persecution. A little persecution. That's going to separate you from the love of Christ. See, these are questions the Lord have asked in this book. And you have to sit back and read these things and think about it. Go ahead. Or famine. Oh, I'm a little hungry, man. You know what? Yeah, it's really time to stop. Man, I can't serve the Lord. Man, I'm hungry, brother. I'm starving out here. The Lord tell you. That even an unrighteous person for a piece of bread, a demand a transgress. He'll break the word for a piece of bread. Look at even Edom sold his birthright for some red pottage. See, we got to look at what, what is the big picture that the Lord is showing us. And it's to keep love and keep truth to the end and deal with it. But go ahead and read. Or nakedness? Nakedness? Because if somebody snatch your clothes off, you're going to say, man, I got to stop serving the Lord, man. He got me out here naked. He let them snatch my clothes off. No, go ahead. Or peril? Or a little danger? Is that going to separate you from the love of Christ? A little danger? It's dangerous all the time. Go ahead. Or sword? Or the sword. Somebody bust off around. <laughs> And you, oh man, oh man, see man, that, that was too close, brother. I, I gotta, I can't be uh, uh, walking with y'all, brother. Y'all got too much evil that's around you. Go ahead, look what that next verse say. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. For the Lord's sake, it's like we get killed all day long. All day, all day. Why? Because the world is going contrary to the Lord. They cast the, man, keep the Lord away from me and his anointed. They don't want nothing to do with that. So it's like, it, it's getting killed all day. It's a brother at my job talking the other, uh, yesterday. Oh man, uh, you know, I love this. Uh, I don't eat the uh, catfish and this no more, but now I eat calamari. And uh, I can't uh, deal with the shrimp no more, but I, I still can eat the pork. I mean, it's, it's just like we get killed all day long dealing with it. it. It's things that we suffer all the time and you just have to deal with it. But what you going to do? I know one thing I'm going to go forward and keep these commandments. That's right. Go ahead. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Go ahead. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Yes. Through him that loved us. Through him that loved us. Go ahead. For I am persuaded. I'm persuaded. That neither death. Neither death. Nor you ain't going oh. to let death separate you. Neither death, go ahead. Nor life, go ahead. Nor angels, nor angels. You ain't gonna let no angel uh, uh, separate you? No, go ahead. Nor principality, nor principality. The principality come down on you. You gonna let it separate you from the commandments? And that you ain't gonna walk this thing no more? Go ahead. Nor powers, nor powers. Go ahead. Nor things present, nor things present. <laughs> Don't let nothing in the present deal with you where you say, man, I'm not about to walk this no more. Mm. I'm about to keep this thing to the end. That's what you got to keep in your mind. Because some people get a little weary. Yeah, you know, we've been doing it for a while. You know, maybe, you know, we shouldn't walk no more. No, we're going to walk. We're going to walk with the Lord to the end. He said, if you be with, he going to be with you if you be with him. And we with him. And how we've been taught, we've been taught to be with the Lord. Go ahead. Nor things to come. Nor things to come. Go ahead. Nor a height. I don't care how high the evil get. I don't care how high the tribulation get. You got to believe in your God always. Go ahead. Nor death. Nor death. Nor how, to, how, low, uh, 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 how low down something go. Go ahead. Nor any other creature uh -huh. shall be able to separate us from the love of God, 
which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nor any other creature to separate us from the love of God. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians the third chapter. See like I say. It's always. Wisdom knowledge and understanding. On how to. Call upon the Lord. And to bless his holy name. And to believe on this word. That the Lord have set before us. Because he said I laid it all out for you. He said, I told you the end from the beginning. I told you those things before they came to pass. Lest you should say, yeah, my, my idol gave that to me. No, the Lord told me nobody taking his credit. He gave us this word and he's the head of the body and he want us to continue in his word. Continue in this thing. Verse 12, Colossians, the third chapter. And we want to pick it up. At verse 12, this is just like, um, you know, basketball. They got four quarters, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we, we like through the first quarter in this lesson. So you got three <laughs> more quarters left. See, some lessons are short. Some lessons I come through, give you that McDonald's drive through. <laughs> now, nah, this lesson ain't so. Some lessons you just have to deal with. We're going to deal with it. But let's go to Colossians chapter 3. And we're going to pick it up at verse 12, brother. 3 and 12. All right, go ahead. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, mm -hmm. kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. Kindness, humbleness of mind. We're going to look at these because the Lord got these. He got these bodies and he bringing bodies together and he's going to tell you something. And like, like we look at certain bodies can't come together right now, right? And you rejoice when you can come together with your brothers and sisters and you have no strife. No ill, no hatred with your, I ain't talking to them. The Lord, see, we got to look, we going to look at this lesson. Like I said, we just get there to it, kind of. But now, what verse is that, brother? 13, brother? All right, go ahead. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Ain't that, ain't that heavy? It said, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, as Christ forgave, so also do ye. Christ done forgiven us for things that we have done. The Lord tell us to forgive others as Christ have forgiven us. That way this thing works smooth because love, you feeling real good in love. I might have a little pain in this knee when I bend down, but if I'm dealing with love, I still feel good. And I, how you feeling so good? I thought your knee was messed up. It is. But I'm still dealing with the love of Christ also at the same time. <laughs> now, what verse? We have 14. All right, go ahead. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Uh, oh, put on what? Charity, charity, which is the bond to bring us to perfection. That's what, see, this thing is working right here, right now. It's working in the mind. But the Lord gone at the point in time, you hold on, you're going to get that body. That feel no pain. Don't get sick. And, it, and, and one real important thing, you ain't got to worry about dying. Like, man, I could die, man. Yeah, in this flesh, yeah, you could perish from the earth. But if you attain, but that's why you keep that mind. Keep that charity because it's the bond that bring this thing together. See, we're going to look at the, that's that bond that bring us to this thing that the Lord trying to bring us to this oneness. You got to be one on love. Keeping his commandments, because if you're going to be rebellious and, oh, I don't agree with that, and I'm going to say something, we're going to see how the Lord deal with you. Go ahead and read, brother, what verse? 15. Okay. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body. How many bodies? One body. Go ahead. And be ye thankful. See, be so thankful. See, that's what the Lord wants us to look at. See, this... This period could be a trial and a time for us to examine ourselves and look at how the Lord, you know, brought forth this thing. Now you got to do social distance, right? Mm -hmm. And the Lord say, but when you're dealing with this thing, when you do come together, are you rejoicing? Are you bickering? Do you have strife? Like I say, you see this sister, man, I ain't talking to her. No, brother. We have to really look at this thing and understand what the Lord is doing and how he set it up. And you may have had the controversy or issue, but you ask forgiveness and you forgive. And sometimes you got to talk about it 
and then you move on in love. And it had happened. You, hey, brother, ain't no, ain't no love lost, as we say. We're going to deal with this thing. But what verse are you? That was the end of 15. Go ahead, verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, richly. in all wisdom. Go ahead. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. All right. That's good, brother. That the word of God dwell in you richly. The word of God got to be dwelling in you. That's that. You need that word to be a part of this thing. You need that truth. But now let's go into uh, Malachi. Back to Malachi, the second chapter. See, this body is built up on love. And it's, we should all be on one page concerning what the truth is and what love is. There shouldn't be no bickering, no disputing. Perverse disputing of men like the Lord tell you to have corrupt minds. That turn you away from godliness and turn you to lasciviousness and things that bring you away from the word of God. Which will have its end also. But now, Malachi <coughs> chapter 2. Back to Malachi chapter 2. This time we're going to pick it up at verse 10. Malachi 2 and 10. Look what this say. Have we not all one father? Have we not all one father? Now, some people don't understand it. We ain't all got one father because some people father is the devil. We See, it's understanding because look what the next part of this say. And this will give you the understanding where the Lord really going with this. Go ahead. Have not one God created us? But one thing you can't say, Satan ain't create us all. It was one God that created us all. And the Lord want everybody dealing on one. Everybody dealing on one, having one mind. So there is no disputing, no division. No, you shouldn't have a lot of contention with the servants of God. And if it do, it should be resolved immediately almost. Why? Because you, I'm on one wish. I got you. I was a little unclear, but now I understand and know who the Lord's servant is and who he using. See, I know the Lord is using our elder brother, Brother Boy. I know he using it because I done tried. I done talked to them and I see how they walk too. The Lord said, hey, pay attention to your elders and the people that the Lord said before you. Right. Yeah, don't think that they don't know what's going on. But now, what verse is that? We had the middle of 10. Go ahead. Why do we deal treacherously, every man against his brother? Every, why you deal treacherously with your brother? Go ahead. By profaning the covenant of our fathers. And breaking the covenant, which is breaking his commandments. Mm -hmm. That you got to keep them and do them to the end. Go ahead. Judah hath dealt treacherously. Go ahead. And an abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. See, we got to watch this. Like I said, even this time is a time to reflect and think about. Have you been dealing treacherously with your brother or your sister? Or your children? Or your boss? We're going to look at all this. We're going to look at how the Lord set this up and how you're supposed to be looking at it. Go ahead. For Judah have profaned the holiness of the Lord, which he loved. Now we was just reading about, put on as, as holy and beloved, put on bowels of mercy, tenderness, kindness, forbearing one another. All this is holiness. But sometimes people profane, but they'll profane holiness. And what you going to deal with? unholiness go ahead and have married the daughter of a strange God and you're gonna hook up with strange doctrine and a strange God and Satan is called the God of his world and that's really strange he's an angel he's a sent forth the minister but some people like he like he over them like he running things as if he's controlling it brother Jacob showed you last week the Lord is in control the Lord is ordering this thing and you have to believe on him and understand his way. But now let's go further, brother. Let's go into Jeremiah chapter, uh, excuse me, John chapter four. Let's go to John chapter four. Because when we come forth to deal with the word of God, this is not a, this is not play matter. <laughs> Lord, uh, real serious. Only time I seen the Lord joking is when he smites you, somebody with calamity that ain't been listening to him. They keep rejecting the word. Then he said, he that sit in heaven going to laugh at them when they calamity come. And when they tribulation come. Because they ready to separate from the Lord quickly anyway. But now let's go into John chapter 4. 
<clears throat> and we're going to pick it up at verse uh, 23. John 4 and 23. All right, once when you get there, brother, go ahead and read. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Now, the hour is coming and what? And now is. Now is to see the Lord dealing with this now. When the true worshipers must worship the Father in what? In spirit and in truth. That's why I say you need that. You need your mind to be renewed on this word and what the Lord is doing. Don't get off focus. Don't start wavering. Don't get all what they call lose confidence in the Lord. Go ahead. For the father seek of such to worship him. For, for the father is seeking such to worship, to worship him in spirit and in truth. That's why the Lord said, why did he make one in the beginning? Why he did one? He let you know. So he looking for a godly seed and he looking for those and take heed to your spirit that you ain't dealing treacherously. It ain't just with your wife or don't deal. He talk about a woman that treacherously depart from her husband. It ain't just a wife. It's all every you supposed to be dealing righteously in all the earth with man. Rendering evil for evil to no man. Loving your enemy. All these things, the Lord got it all set up. And we understand it. And we're going to continue to do this until the end. But go ahead and read. We have 24. Uh-huh. God is a spirit. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit. See how you see. That's why they say, Lord, you holy. How, how are we supposed to worship you? But the Lord trying to bring you on one. But it started. That's why I say now is the time that the true worshipers is going to worship. Now is the time that the true worshipers is going to worship him. Why? Because this he dealing with your mind right now. Because if you get this right, then he'll see fit to give you that body that lives forever that's really could see him how he is. But that's what the Lord been trying to bring us to from the beginning. He looking for a godly seed. He created man in the likeness, but we trying to go all the way with it, with the image and after his kind. See, all these steps, it's a process. You, you, you just don't become God. Poof, I'm God. Right. No, brother, this process you have to deal with. And we've been learning how this process work for a lot of years now what verse was that 24 yep all right let's go further brother let's go into uh jeremiah chapter 7 see the truth is powerful and the truth is strong too and some people be like you get afraid when that truth come and sometimes you think you ain't ready or holy enough right mm -hmm. look at peter say depart from me lord i'm a sinful man right lord leave me alone <laughs> you know but the lord say hey repent and change them sinful ways that's why he say put away lying Repent, turn, O backsliding Israel. You could turn back, even if you have transgressed, turn back. Repent unto the Lord. Acknowledge that you have done wrong also. Acknowledge your sin, confess your sin, and change from your sin to walk in this holiness, okay? Because this thing is beautiful when you see it and when the Lord open up your understanding to it. Now, Jeremiah chapter 7. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Jeremiah 7 and 1. Because we're going to kind of look at. Um, what people say. And what this thing about too. With this. What the Lord talking about. This building that he's setting up. But go to 7 and 1. Alright when you get it go ahead. The word that came to Jeremiah from the, from the Lord. Saying. Stand in the gate of the Lord's house. And proclaim there this word uh -huh. and say, hear the word of the Lord, all ye of Judah that enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. Hear ye the word of the Lord, all ye that enter into these gates to worship the Lord. Anybody that came into his sanctuary, he wants you to hear this word. This is what he gave to Jeremiah. Go ahead. Three. Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, mm -hmm. amend your ways and your doings. Do what? Amend them. Now, people are always talking about the, the Constitution United States and all, they need to amend this and see, they need to bring forth another amendment and do that. What we need to be doing is looking at our own lives and seeing what we need to amend to be on one with God. Yes, sir. That's what we need to be looking at. Amend your ways and your doings so the Lord can do what? And I will cause you to dwell in this place. Lord will cause you to dwell and even come into his house, in his kingdom. 
Go because he said he's gonna set it up and all nations are gonna be gathered unto him because people are listening and they look forward to hearing the word that come forth of the priest's lips, which we're gonna teach you this law. We're gonna tell you, yeah, you gotta keep the commandments and you have to deal in wisdom. Go ahead. Trust ye not in lying words. Don't trust in no lying words. That's that other body. No, this body that we're dealing with is a body of truth. It's a body of love. You got a body of hate and lies. Yeah, keep that body out of motion. <laughs> Break him down. Bring this body back forth, man. This body needs to be in action. Not the body of the Lord sitting around somewhere. Go ahead. Saying, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. Now they look, the temple of the Lord. Now uh, Israel, they had this uh, temple. But now you're looking at also people, the temple of the Lord are these. You calling somebody that ain't dealing with God's word according to how he tell you. And you're going to say, this is the temple of the Lord. This is what the Lord building. Right. See, that's why I say we pollute the Lord's holy name when you do certain things. That's why Israel, you got to repent. You got to come away from this thing. You got to stop hollering at people, telling them that they ain't part of this and they can't be part of it. But go ahead and read. Five. For if ye thoroughly amend your ways and your doings. If you thoroughly amend your ways and your doings. Go ahead. And if you thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor. And if you thoroughly execute judgment with a man and his neighbor. You have to make the right judgments on, I'm going to choose the word of God. Because some people make the making the wrong judgment. Now, I don't deal with that old Bible. I think the white man wrote it. However, the Lord did away with them people. He's not dealing with them no more. All this type of thing, the Lord tells you, hey, man, you need to uh, uh, amend your ways and execute the judgment of the Lord. But go ahead and read. Six. Mm -hmm. If ye oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after other gods that you're hurt. To your, to your hurt, right? Yeah. So what's going to happen is as soon as you turn away from the Lord, you're going to walk after some other gods to your own hurt. Because the Lord trying to put you on one with him. And when you ain't on one with the Lord, you're going to walk after some strange guys and you ain't going to be doing, you ain't going to be amending your ways according to the word. See, this is a humble walk. That's why we read humbleness of mind. All this thing, because you got to humble yourself before the Lord to keep these commandments. Now, let's go further. Let's go into First uh, Corinthians chapter six. First Corinthians chapter six. Now, this body is a body of holiness, too, right? This is a holy body that you're dealing with. See, everybody. The Lord deal and choose who he will. Mm -hmm. But one thing you got to know is you got to do this thing in holiness, in righteousness, in keeping God's commandments. Excuse me. Now, let's go into uh, this alarm going off up here. Excuse me. Let's go into 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I don't know what that's trying to tell me because that I ain't about to let that separate me from this lesson. Right, brother. A little alarm going off on me. Let's go into uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and we want to pick it up at verse 7. 1 Corinthians 6, and I want you to pick it up at verse 7. All right, brother, when you get that, go ahead. Verse, uh, verse 20, 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 20. 6 and 20. Excuse me if I, I messed up your note. You know, Israel, man, he done messed up my notebook. <laughs> go ahead and read. For ye are bought with a price. Ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You are bought with a price. Therefore, do what? Glorify God in your body. Serve God with your strength, with your might, and in that spirit, which are, which are whose? God. Which are God's. You really see this, the Lord using people. His, his, Christ is the body. This is the body that we link it on to. But your body belong to him because he using your body as if it was his body to bring forth whatever he got to do. The Lord got to use just like Satan used people. The Lord using people. We that body. Can you the Lord? The Lord body ain't sitting around resting somewhere. He he work his to and his father working. They got to execute stuff. It's things still taking place. And the Lord tell you that you have to deal with this thing. But now we're going to go further. What verse? Skip up to verse. All right. We're still in 1 Corinthians 6. Skip up to verse 15 because we want to look at something else. But this, this, your glorify God in your body and in your spirit. Go ahead. Uh, read verse 15, right? Yep. All 
All right, go ahead. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Don't you know that your body is the member of Christ? It's the member of Christ. These bodies the Lord using that's dealing with his word, that believe on this thing, he used them like his body because we all one. And he the head and he directed. See, this, we got to understand it. Go ahead and read. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? Shall I take the members of Christ and use my body to hook on with the harlot? Go ahead. God forbid. Look what it say. What? What? Know ye not that which is joined to a harlot is one body. Don't you know that that was joined to? See, and now we've been talking about these bodies, and I hope I broke it down enough for you to understand. Adam and Eve was two bodies, but the twain was one. The two was one. You see these people joining on to the Lord and hooking on to the Lord. And we this body, ye are the temple. I hope you see that this body that is of Christ, he said, if you, if you join that body to a harlot, meaning if you go on the same mindset, if I hook up with the harlot, I obviously agree with the harlot. I agree with whoredom. I agree with folly. If I hook up with the harlot, then I'm become one with the harlot. It's how you agree and what your take heed to your spirit that you renew the spirit of your mind with this word after the image of God and stay on page with him. Yes, sir. But go ahead and read. For two said he shall be one flesh. Two said the Lord shall be one. See, we're looking at this too because the Lord is doing something. He's trying to take flesh and make it on equal with spirit. We're going to look at and the Lord is used. He operating this through this word. And you got to believe on it and understand how it works. Go ahead. Yeah, 17. Uh-huh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. And, but he that's joined unto the Lord is what? One spirit. One man. You one man. I don't know why this. I wish I can kill it. Now, let's go further, brother. Let's go into Isaiah chapter 56. Isaiah chapter 56. See, some people uh, is okay to be on, on page with the unclean and to be on one with the unclean. See, it's this mindset. You got to have one mindset with the Lord. And I agree with all that you say. Not I, uh, I kind of don't agree with that. I don't really, I don't really agree with what that brother, uh, how he deal with that or how he believed that. If it's in a book, you got to deal with it. There shouldn't be no dispute. It ain't hard to tell what's truth and what's a lie. Go in the book, you find truth. And the things that's not in the page of the book, you can say, hey, man, there's some lies on some of that stuff. Now, let's go further. Let's go into Isaiah 56 because we talked about being joined to the Lord, right? Yep. He that's joined to the Lord is one spirit. I mean, I'm on one mind with the Lord. I believe this thing. I ain't going to waver. I ain't going to turn to the left hand nor to the right hand. Didn't he tell the prophet? He said, don't when you go into this place, don't turn to the right hand. Don't eat no bread. Don't go in the same way you came out. This old prophet, y'all my old prophet, brother. He went back and the Lord had to deal with him. But he was the man of God. You got to look at this, how the Lord set this up. And stay on page and keep what the Lord say and don't waver. But now, we're going to pick it up in verse 2. Isaiah 56 and verse 2. All right, once you get that, go ahead and read. Blessed is the man that doeth this. Blessed is the man that do this. And the son of man that lay of hold on it. Uh-huh, go ahead. That keepeth the Sabbath from polluting. That keep the Sabbath from polluting it. That blessed is the man that do this. And the son of man that lay hold on it to keep the Sabbath. Don't pollute it. It's still the Sabbath day. We keeping it different today. Because of what the Lord is bringing forth, okay? Mm -hmm. We can't change the way of the hand of God. You got to just roll with it. But how the Lord set this up, you still got to be keeping the Sabbath. Don't turn on the football game after you get off this lesson. <laughs> turn on another lesson. Right. Listen to some of them songs. We didn't have a choir today. We got straight into the word. Listen to some of that music on there. But keep this Sabbath holy. Read your book. Keep it holy. Go ahead and read because blessed is a man that keep this Sabbath day. And how the Lord operate. And bring it forth this word on the Sabbath. Like I said, this is why we're here because this is essential. I wouldn't be out here otherwise. Go ahead. And keep his hand from doing any evil. And, and keep your hand from doing evil. See, that's what it's all about. Watch that because that's when the Lord began to look at you. Go ahead. 
Neither let the son of the stranger that have joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, The Lord have utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. Don't let the stranger say that joined himself, joined himself to who? To the Lord. So you join it on with the Lord. The stranger could be joined on to the Lord. Yes. That's why we was looking at this. This is uh, uh, gatherings of people that's coming unto the Lord. One of a city, two of a family. The Lord bring it together. Those that believe. Go ahead. Four. For thus said the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbath mm -hmm. and choose the things that please me. Go ahead. And take hold of my covenant. And the, the, those, that, those eunuchs that keep my Sabbath and choose will please him and take hold of his covenant. Yes. See, this is what it's all about. It shouldn't be no dispute about the love and what the truth is on, the, on about this book. But go ahead and read. Five. Even unto them will I give in my house and within my walls a place and a name better than, a, than of the sons and of daughters. Uh -huh. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. An everlasting name is better than, uh, you know, this name that we done polluted. He said, we polluting the holy name. But you get an everlasting name, you're going to be around forever. Go ahead. Also the sons of the stranger that join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord, to be his servants. Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant. That's why one, uh, I was talking to uh, one of these, so called herself a witness. The sister say, see, that was for Israel, Sydney. Then I went and read her this. Then I went and read her Isaiah 66, how all these people going to come forth and keep the Sabbath. Right. When the new heaven and the new earth turn, they going to come forth from Sabbath to Sabbath, keeping the Sabbath before the Lord. And it said right here, it said everyone. That keep the Sabbath. Mm. Even a stranger. You strange to this thing, but you can learn about it. The stranger can repent and learn and deal with this thing right too. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Seven. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain. Uh -huh. And make them joyful in my house of prayer. Even them. Talking about the stranger. So it looks like the Lord is gathering people and people. But he's, he's going to put them all on one because they all going to agree with the Sabbath. They don't agree with keeping the commandments and walking in love and humbleness of mind and, and kindness and praying for one another and forgiving one another and all these things that the Lord does set forth. Mm -hmm. They're going to agree with all that. It ain't going to be no discrepancy. Go ahead. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar. The Lord going to accept their offerings. Go ahead. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. For how many people? All people. How many? One more time. All people. All people. <laughs> This is, the Lord is setting this thing up, but he wants you to believe on this thing. He ain't willing that none should perish, but they all come to repentance and know, acknowledge your sin and forsake it and no longer walk in folly. But I also want to, uh, I want to say a prayer for these brothers, you know, so I'm standing face Jerusalem, all who want to stand face Jerusalem or kneel or bow your head. I'm going to say a prayer for these brothers. O oh, great God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I call upon you, O oh Lord, just asking that you hearken unto my voice, the voice of my prayer and my cry. We beseech you, O oh Father, that you look upon our elder brother, Brother Bowie. We need him. We ask, O oh Lord, that you bless him, that you recover your servant, that you heal him, and that you strengthen him whole and bring him back Bring his flesh back again, O oh Lord, that he might be restored and that he might come forth and speak your word with power and might that he always have. And we also pray for our brother James as well. Brother James Collins, we ask, O oh Lord, that you heal him and that your mercy and your goodness and your grace continue to be upon your people to strengthen us and to guide us and lead us about to the place and to the promises that you have said unto your people and unto your name and unto all the house of Israel holy. Yes. And we ask these things in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is blessed forevermore. Amen. Amen.
Thank you for tuning in to today's lesson. If you are in the Chicagoland area, we welcome you to join our church community every Saturday at 12 noon central. We are located at 520 West 138th Street in Riverdale, Illinois. Our ministry is made possible by your donations. To make a donation or to view all of our locations across the world, please visit our website at www.theisraelofgod.com. Even so, by the right. I'm